Hello everyone, good evening. How are you doing? I haven't seen you guys in a while. I'm just back from Brazil and happy to be here seeing friendly faces. Uh, just, just thinking of today, today's Halloween and I was thinking uh, it's, it's a, they are talk about a lot of talk about witches, right? Today is a day of the witches. And just remembering like centuries ago, all the people that were condemned to be witches and the fact that they were, many of them were tortured and burned and most of them were probably mediums. And we are so lucky, right, to have spiritism, this new doctrine that will enlighten us and help us understand the many gifts we have. And probably uh, we were, and when we think of the past, sometimes we separate ourselves from the past, but let's remember that we have been reincarnating, incarnating, and reincarnating. So hopefully uh, now we have, if we did anything wrong to anyone, we have now the opportunity to amend, right? So just thinking of, did you guys think about that today? Though, what, did, no, it was just, okay, maybe just me. I'm weird. So we're going to talk about freedom today. Freedom. Uh, and I'll ask you, do you think you're free? We live in the land of the free, don't we? And the home of the brave. But we live in the land, we live in the land of the free. And I, I want to ask you, do you think you're free? Are you free? To do what? To do what? <laughs> That's a great question. But I'm asking you a question. Are you free? Do you con if, if I were to ask you, well, then I am. Do you consider yourself free? Are you a free person? Huh? You feel free. You guys feel free. Somehow. In order to, and Hanato was wondering, well, okay, free for what? What am I free for? And that's a good question. In order to, to respond, to answer if we are free or not, we have to ask, what is freedom? What is to be free? Because a lot of people, we all want to be free, right? We say, I want to be free. Free for what? Free to do what? Our society today, right? The kids, the kids want to be free. And what we see a lot is they want to be free, but they get enslaved by drugs and alcohol, right? So that's not real freedom. So our, the way we define freedom in society is not the same we define freedom from a spiritual perspective. Do you agree with me? Yes? Why is that so? Why being free spiritually is different from being free when we, what we call free here in this incarnated, in this material world that we live in currently? Okay, so free will. So free will. In society, you have to follow some rules that sometimes, most of the time, you have to follow some instruction, behavior, good sense that restricts your totally freedom. So what you're saying is there are two different laws, sets of laws. The man's law. The human, the man's laws, and God's laws, right? And Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what, is, what belongs to God. And of course, we have to give to Caesar. We have to live in this society. So we went, when we went to school, we all had this class. I, oh, I know so maybe some of you might be younger than me, and I'm sorry if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I might, might give up my age. Uh, there is a class that we had in school that was called Moral and Civic. 
Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you guys remember this class? You did? I thought, oh, you heard about it. Thank you. I know the boys didn't, so I'm not going to even ask Elias and, and David. But remember what the, our teachers, they used to say that my freedom stops where? Where the other person, remember, oh, it's good. She was a good student when the other person starts. So we do not live by ourselves. We live in society. And if we live in society, we cannot act and do whatever we want, right? So let's ponder. Freedom is the right to do everything that the law allows. That's a thought. Is that freedom? Because that's what we consider freedom. I'm a free man. I can do everything that the law <laughs> allows. But we are not only we're not only confined by laws. Are we only confined by the laws? No, we are also confined by what? By what society expects of us, right? Don't we? Don't we conform? We conform. Civilization is the process of freeing one man from the others. Freedom is responsibility, and that is why so many people is afraid of it. And I love this phrase, because that is it, is free will, like Carlos said. And David already kind of gave me a great introduction, gave a great introduction to my, my talk, because it's based in everything that he said. Freedom, a lot of people are afraid to be free and they like to conform. They like to follow. People like to be followers. They like to be victims. Why? Because when you have freedom, true freedom, spiritual freedom, and then you have to act from yourself, from your thoughts, from your uh, decisions only, what happens? You're is totally responsible for your actions. It's scary. That is very scary. There is one philosopher, Etienne Lavoisier. No, Etienne. Oh, I forgot his last name. He's a French philosopher from the 17th century. And he says that all men, they like to be captive. They like, a dic they like dictators. Because when you're ruled by a dictator, you're a victim. And if we look at history, for example, Russia. Let's use Russia as, as an example. That there was the time of the Tsars. Then Russia freed themselves from them to fall into Lenin's hands. <laughs> And then from Lenin's hands to the actual, and I'm not talking about politics here, I just want you to see a pattern of, I'm just using this as an example so we can see a pattern, from the actual president. So if you think, when is act, the society was screaming for freedom, they, were, they wanted, they said, the Russian society wanted to be free. Did they really want it to be free? from dictators, from rulers, from tough rulers? No, they just changed. They just changed names. That's what they did. Why? Because it is scary. In Brazil, right? We see a lot of, we have, as, as people, we have this, and I say this is a custom, to complain about the government. Everything that is above us, we, we blame everyone for everything that happens to us as people we do why because it's hard it's scary to take responsibility and my question is do we want really want to be free do you really want to be free and that's something you have to ask yourself that's a great you have to investigate and and uh, that's one of the things that spiritism offers is the know thyself. We have to really stop and look ourselves, not the other, 
not the other people, because it's easy to look at the other people and, and judge them. No, to look herself. Freedom is the right to choose, the right to create for yourself the alternatives of choice. Without the possibility of choice and the exercise of choice, a man is not a man, but a member, an instrument, a thing. So let's say if we, and, and some scientists, they do argue that their, the free will is just an illusion. But there's also a lot of scientists that, that uh, argue otherwise, that we do have free will. Because if we do not have free will, like some, some doctrines, some religions, they believe that everything has been written before we were born, our whole lives, we could not do anything different, right? Like in Islam, it's the maktub. Everything is written. You cannot do anything different. That's your destiny. You're determined, that's it. So if that is true, how can I be guilty of anything if I have no choice? If God has already decided for me before I was born, who chose? my future, huh? It was God. Can I be blamed for anything that was chosen for me, was picked for me? No, but that's not what Spiritism teaches us. So Spiritism teaches us that we do have free will and we can choose, otherwise we'd be machines. And how can we improve if we cannot choose, if we cannot make mistakes, if we cannot make amends. The spirits, they tell us that total freedom in the material world is impossible because we live with other people. But the spirits, they also tell us that we have freedom of thought. We can think anything we want, don't we? We have total freedom of thought. But even total freedom of, of thought versus freedom of action. If I think something bad, what happens? If I don't act on it, I only think. I only is only a thought. But we you know, are there consequences to bad thoughts? Uh huh? Yes. So we are. We are also responsible for our thoughts. How is so? How is so? Why are we responsible for our thoughts? Are they if you're thinking only bad things all day, what is going to happen to you? Besides, you, you, your, your blood pressure is going to go up <laughs> and all the other physical things that come with bad thoughts. But what is the energetic consequences? What? You're going to attract bad things and bad spirits. You're going to attract whatever Whatever you send out is what you're going to get back. There is, it's, it's very easy. It's, it's, the spiritual doctrine is very easy. It's very rational. It's very simple. When you open the channel, you have to watch the TV the radio. Exactly. It's the radio, right? Once you tune, you're tuned into that station, that's what you're going to hear. That's what you're going to get. Sertanejo. <laughs> I'm not comparing bad vibrations with Sertanejo. That's not what I'm doing here. Pagodi, maybe. No. Please. Please. <laughs> so, what is liberty? Liberty is the right that allows us to decide and act according to our own will. Thus, we by nature are our own masters. What Dave, I, I had, I talked to David. I'm like, David, make sure you talk about this and that, touch this point. Um, and he did. Thank you, David. <laughs> we hold in our hands the right to choose what is the best way to live our lives. However, we do not possess absolute freedom because everyone who lives in society must respect the rights and choices of others. That's pretty simple, right? We learned that back in the days when, not you, but we did, the other people. <laughs> The genesis of all actions dwells inside of us and also the choice of carrying them out or not. So everything that happens to us, like David said, is our responsibility because we create our reality. 
we create our reality. Socrates, since I have Socrates pictures that I just remember, he was in prison. He was in prison. And all his friends, they, they, they couldn't stand that he was in prison. So they all get together. And Socrates had some powerful friends. And they went to visit him. And he, they said, Socrates, we have come here to take you out of here, to take you out of this prison, to set you free. Socrates turned to them and said, who said I'm not free? Who said I'm not free? Because if we base freedom in our material conditions, if we are enslaved by our appearances, how my body is, or our status, or what I know I don't know, what I don't know, in which country I am. In the material world, we're never going to feel free. Because freedom is, that's what, what Jesus came to teach us. The real freedom lives inside of us. The peace, that's the Christ. When we say the Christ's peace, that's what it is. The freedom, the peace of understanding that you are a son, a daughter of God. And this is nothing but a passage. You're just, this is part, this is one more step in your evolution, and you're great, and you're beautiful. We forget all that, huh? And free. And free. We, don't we don't know how much, yes. This is just a moment, there's a blank in our existence. And sometimes we take it so hard. Like remembering our responsibility for actions, everything that comes out of our mouth, everything that we do, all the reaction, all, because remember cause and effect. We already went through that because you guys brought up, but just to finish, do we all have free will? What is free will? Our decisions are far more independent of nature and nurture than any animals. We are aware of our ability to think and of the consequences of our choices. We can claim responsibility for our actions. Why cannot I cannot blame a dog for biting me? Why cannot I, why we don't have dogs in prison? Sometimes we kill them, right? And I, which I think is absurd because we brought them into whatever environment. But why can we cannot blame animals for their actions? Because they're not choosing, right? They, if they don't have the ability to think, they're not choosing. If they're not choosing, if you're not, if you could not choose your action, you're not responsible. But we are. That's why it's so important. Before we act, we have to stop and think. We cannot act on instinct anymore, because, like David said, in the beginning, you know, we know, and there is no undoing. There is no unknowing. Oh, no, I want to forget everything that David said, la, la, la. That does not work. Is there, you know. And it's easy to bring it up. It's not that, that hard. The spirits, they say, question 621, what are the laws of God inside of us, in our conscience? So it's easy to wake all this knowledge up. We make it hard, but it's not. Free will means that we are self-determined, not ultimately subject to forces outside of our control. It means we could have done otherwise. So when you're in a situation, you say, oh, no, you could have done it differently. God always, otherwise, God would not be just. If we could only have done it wrong, it meant that we did not have the option to do it right, and that doesn't that doesn't agree with the laws of God because God is just, he, it will give you the opportunity to do it right. There's a phrase by Naomi Neal that I think applies here that it says, in the middle of life, the spirit sleeps, in the plant life, it dreams, in the animal life, it awakens, in the human life, it thinks. It thinks. And I'll, 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 I might add, I'm adding to the Leon and you, please, that is not, you're not filming. 
And then when we became angels, we fly, right? We fly. That's true freedom. Jesus was truly free. And it's so beautiful if you think about it. The one of the most free, free, the one of the freest beings in the universe that we know came to this earth to teach slaves. Have you thought of that? Remember, the Jewish people, they were slaves. So we had, we, God is, God lo really loves us. Think about this. So we had one of the most, the free, one of the freest creatures that we know, this beautiful being that is so free because he's one with God, came to us and he chose to teach, to help, to start his teachings, his gospel among slaves. Are we all slaves still? We are. And of course, we can only act according, we can choose, we can choose, but we can choose within the laws of God, including the, the natural laws, right? I cannot, I want to fly. I can't just, <laughs> right, flip my wings and fly. So we can choose, and that's why I brought this billiard game, because, well, you can hit the balls. There, there are many options. We can, and we can choose within many options, and, but there are limited options for us right now and they all have a distinct these little waves are the consequences every time we act and all those consequences they interact with each other so everything we do and let's say if you say something to Ademario um, like Ademario is listening to what we're talking right now this is affecting him and he's going to affect someone else and everything we do we're affecting the uh, that's why the big responsibility in our actions and things we say and the things we do some people they say well this person seems that everything happens it doesn't matter what that person does everything bad happens to them have you heard of that have you heard that does they have bad luck or and Kardec asked the spirits, there are persons who seem to be pursued by a fatality independent of their own action. Are not their misfortune? In such cases, the result of predestination. Saying, didn't God already said, well, this person is just, won't have any luck. What the spirits told us. They may be trials which those persons are compelled to undergo because they have been chosen by them in the spirit state. Because we forget that we chose a lot of things that we go through. We, use, we exercise our free will when we were in the spiritual world. We don't only have free will when we're incarnated. When to discarnate, we have free will. It doesn't matter. And, and that's our natural state anyway. So we chose the trials. But you often set down to destiny what is only the consequence of your own fault. Try to keep a clear conscience, and you will be consoled for the greater part of your afflictions. What is the Spirit saying? Just, you chose this. What are you going through? Just calm down. Just calm down. You'll be fine. Fatality, as commonly understood, supposes an interior and irrevocable ordaining of all the events of human life. Whatever the degree of importance, if such were the order of things, man would be a machine without a will of his own. Of what use would his intelligence be to him, seeing that he would be invariably overruled in all his acts by the power of destiny? Again, when we complain about our lives, can we be complaining about our lives? Can we complain about our own lives? We can't. Because... It's kind of, it's not as kind of, it's, it's all me. <laughs> David, look at this. I also have a similar. <laughs> I know it's more, mine is more Broadway like, oh, no. So mine is very similar to David. But David spoke, spoke of responsibility. I'm also speaking of responsibility and consciousness. So the more aware you are, 
the more constant you are, the more freedom is given to you. Have the spirits, they say, that the higher spirits, the enlightened spirits, they help God with his creation, right? When managing worlds like Jesus, Jesus is the governor of this world, the architect. So that's the freedom a lot we see in quantum physics. Quantum physics shows us uh, that um, double split experience, experience shows us that we do have some control in the material things, like the, the conscious, uh, the observer, the conscious person is collapsing that wave and creating reality. But then we think, how come my re I, I think this and I really want this and that doesn't become reality? Because we are not given that power yet. Because, oh, imagine, when you're in, good, in a good mood, you're thinking something positive. So let's say if you did have the power, we're given the power to create, to collapse that wave right away and create reality. Imagine you angry in traffic. You would flip how many cars? <laughs> you understand? So the laws of God also, when the resp it, the re it goes responsibility, consciousness, freedom, and power over matter. Je that's why Jesus could do a lot. Couldn't Jesus have healed everyone at that time when he came ma materially? Couldn't have, he could, if he wanted, he could have done it. But he knew that was not the purpose. Because he had the knowledge, he had the freedom to act over matter. He had the knowledge, the consciousness, the freedom to act. We'll get there. <coughs> so there are no real victims. Are there victims? No. I always say that. We're not victims. Because it's just the way things are. We are we're choosing action and reaction. So we that I have this picture so you understand. Every action, everything we do, everything we say is like a little plant, and that's gonna grow. And then what happens? You're stuck with that, taking care of that tree. <laughs> so what kind of tree you want? Yeah. You, you don't plant pineapple and get what? Well, apple, there we go, that's easy. Pineapple, apple, right? If you planted pineapple, you're gonna get pineapple? It's very simple. And I ask you, how are you using your free will? I'm asking myself too, of course. Are you really free? Leon Denis. Free will is an extension of our personality and consciousness. In order to be free, we must first want it and then work on it. Freeing ourselves from ignorance and material passions replacing vulgar sensations and instincts with common sense and reason. So the, I, and I found this, I think this is perfect to show the path to real freedom, right? He's saying replacing vulgar sensations and instincts with common sense and reason. Then going to heaven and hell, chapter seven, the justice of God being infinite as, as the exact account is kept for each soul of the good and the evil done by it in the course of its earthly life. No evil deed, no evil thought, however slight, fails to produce its own appropriate punishment, but also no good deed, however minute, no right feeling, however fugitive, no virtuous aspiration, however faint, is ever overlooked or ever remains sterile. Even in the case of the spirits, the most depraved, for they are the commandment of its reformation and progress. So everything that we do matter. Sometimes we're like, ah, eh, this is, it doesn't really matter. This is small, this is small action, this is a small, no. Everything matters, and everything has an impact. Who then is responsible for man's affliction if not man himself? 
so that in a great number of cases, he is the cause of his own misfortune. But instead of recognizing this fact, he finds it easier and less humiliating to his vanity to accuse his bad luck, providence, or even his unlucky star, when in actual fact, his unlucky star is his own carelessness. When reckoning with the misfortunes of life, suffering of this nature undoubtedly forms the greatest part of vicissitudes. Only when man works at bettering himself, both morally and intellectually, will be he able to avoid this category of suffering. So what are the spirits are saying here? Face that you're responsible for your destiny. Once you face, you're responsible for your destiny and you're responsible for your actions. Act on it, you suffer less. And we're so afraid of suffering and we are afraid to be really, really free. We postpone this process when we should be running towards it. Because this is real freedom in, in freedom from suffering. So I want to leave you with this image so you can take it home and, and think about it. Think what you're writing in your book of life. No one, God is not writing your book for you. You're writing your story. And I, my question is, are you proud of your story? Are you proud of what you're doing? And if you're not, it's fine. That's why we're here. Most of us won't be proud <laughs> of a, a lot of things we're doing, but it's okay. Let's start writing. Let's, let's start writing it differently from now on. Okay? Thank you so much.